everyone, welcome to the YDT Summit. Today we're here with Barnaby Booth. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty happy. How are you? Fab. Yeah, good as well. <laughs> um, for people that haven't heard much about you, um, do you mind giving a bit of background, sort of where, what your journey's been up to? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, well, I guess when I was uh, going back very far, when I was little, I started uh, dancing at a little, like a local dance school doing uh, jazz musical theatre, tap that sort of thing. Uh, then went on to train and I did my undergraduate in all school of contemporary dance and then uh, did, uh, so was there for three years and then went and did a year at SEED, Southwick Experimental Academy of Dance, and graduated from there in 2017. And then, uh, since then, uh, freelance uh, choreography and also lighting design uh, choreography, mainly kind of doing commissions here and there, traveling around a lot. Um, small dance companies, a bit for music videos, a bit for opera, um, a bit, you know, working uh, working and teaching in, in schools and universities a bit. And then as a lighting designer, staying quite close to the dance world, I've done a couple of plays, but mostly, most of my work as a lighting designer is still within the dance world, so I work with um, yeah. lots of different choreographers and, and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and do you feel that sort of lighting design work sort of really influences your creations and your commissions? Yeah, completely. I mean, I I, I I always really had an interest in theatrical lighting when I was quite young, so it, it sort of grew up next to my interest in choreography and then um, got formalised uh, Got formalized when I was at Northern. I asked uh, Mark Baker, the, uh, the head of the theatre at Northern, if I could have, play around on the lighting desk, basically, and... <laughs> After some nagging, he eventually allowed me to, and it's that sort of that sort of started off as a hobby while I was at Northern, and then I uh, yeah, and then I got invited by Paz Ponsguero, who I was working with as a dancer. He invited me to uh, design his lights and go on tour with him. So, in terms of career, a career in which I call myself a lighting designer, that wasn't ever I never really had that in mind, uh, but it did grow up naturally with my interest in choreography. Um, there's something related within that of I really like, I really love lighting because I love that it's you're creating something beautiful, you're creating a world, but that you're also kind of seeing the instruments that are doing that, and uh, there's that mix of something very beautiful and um, other otherworldly floating in the air, but you can, yeah. but it's it's produced by these very these very sort of hard metal dusty lanterns. I always quite like that idea. And I think that that's, that sort of relates to my way of making choreography as well. I think I'm quite interested in sort of your you're creating this world, but simultaneously you're see you're very much if you're watching a dance performance, you're very much watching the bodies moving of the yeah. of, you know the people whose bodies they are, and you're getting to know them whilst watching them dance. Um, and then there's and then I think more directly. Um, I'm very influenced by the, the choreographers I work with, um, Sita Osteimer, Carlos Ponsgada, two of the people that I sort of work with, uh, Jebek Nishkis, Jamal Berkmar. Um, I work with some amazing people and once I, and you always have a conversation about what the world there is, what the world they are making is, yeah. and um, what their intentions are with what they want to be seen and, and how they want the dancers to be seen, and that, that gets me thinking about my own work always. Um, and then also, I think that when I started, when I started, I think the way I've designed uh, lights, or well, my go-to effects have changed quite a lot over time. You know, I don't have to do lighting uh, at the Riley Theatre at Northern, which is very much um, a black box with side lighting. Yeah. And uh, so I was lighting lots of work. It was very otherworldly and very hazy and very sort of shadowy and dramatic in the work I was making at the time mm -hmm. and early on in my career was that too. And then when I went to Seed and I was lighting work there, um, it's, it's a white room with no wings. It's, okay. it's just a white room with, some, with a few lighting instruments and and you have to find the otherworldly, you have to find the other world within the space that you're in. So it's about um, approaching the actual space and, and seeing, seeing what you can find interesting about it. And I think that that's meant that my choreography went from being very shadowy, very dark, um, to, to now I think my choreography is probably a lot more, I, I like my choreography a lot more from the front now. 
Yeah. And I think as a result, my choreography is more maybe starker and maybe tries uh, tries to do something a bit more vulnerability with exposure of people dancing. So I, yeah, yeah, I think that's the, the journey's been parallel. Yeah. That's nice. Um, what's your process been of sort of networking and getting connections and stuff as you've been? Um, and I've never, I've, I guess I've never, and I, I think this is true of a lot of people, but I don't want to speak, speak for everyone. I've never, I think when I was a student, I imagine networking as this, um, quite a formal thing where you go to events and give out your card. And I think that, I mean, my advice, um, a lot for graduating students is follow your, follow the thing that you're genuinely interested in, and that'll become clear once you graduate, follow the thing that you're genuinely interested in. And part of that is if you are passionate about a certain area of dance, or you're passionate about what you do, then you'll start having interesting conversations with other people that share those passions. And then you will meet people through them. And it's always been far more, I mean, you, one graduates, I graduated both from Northern and Sea with a big network of people that I'd studied with. And from there, it's it's been a case of finding, happening to meet people at a gathering or a party where you get into a conversation that really interests you, whether they're dance people or other artists or people that um, I, you know, I live with or my housemates friends. Uh, yeah, that, that it sort of happens naturally. Um, I've never done the whole, I'm going to go into this place and introduce myself because you meet you meet many brilliant people that way but that you might never you might never sort of click with um all in the name of, of networking in an official sense yeah. um and i've and i've been i also i i've been quite privileged and lucky i should say because in terms of the lighting network i've met people from one job that then led on to something else, that then, that then led on to something else, people who've seen my work. I've been very lucky um, with uh, Sarah Sheed, uh, basically, because she she puts me forward for a lot of lighting work with different choreographers. So it sort of happened quite naturally um, for me, which is maybe not a particularly helpful answer um, <laughs> that I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, yeah, completely helpful. Um, mm. They're just sort of opening up those, um, like opening up the option to take in collaborations with people that you mm. already know and stuff like that and just sort of not being afraid to talk to people within your own network oh yeah i mean i think that you again when i was at, i might be repeating myself here again when i was at northern i wasn't really i was thinking oh i'm gonna have to how am i gonna go out and meet all these important people yeah but actually the people that have been really pivotal um in my career so far a lot of them are people that i was studying with I and mean, i studied with lots um the the two guys that now form Los Little Guys, um, and my work that I made with them is still drawing. Um, and that's been a really, and then just from there, that accessed me to a whole load of um, new contacts over in Mexico, um, where I, I go back and work quite a lot. Um, and so you sort of don't think of it at the time when you're studying, but then, but then actually, because you've spent all of that time with those people and you know them quite well, and and everyone's everyone's interests are kind of different when you're in that environment. But that's 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 still my my strongest network is the people yeah. that I studied I studied with in both in both schools. Nice. Um, mm. Do you have any advice for sort of freelance choreographers um, that are sort of just coming out of education and going into the big bad world? <laughs> I think. Um, Try and be, and this is, this is going to sound really simplistic, and um, I'm slightly repeating myself, but it's going to sound really simplistic, but actually, I don't think it is. Um, really learn what it is that makes you happy, yeah. both in terms of what you create and also how you interact with people, um, what kind of career you want. I think I've, I think that's a, I think that's a, that's a big ask, especially when you're in uh, training, you have all of this information coming at you and you've got all of this influence and you have and you have uh, teachers and then you have your other students and you have all of these different artistic ideas coming at you I think it's difficult to go actually no this is the one this is you know this is the stuff that really appeals to me um, when I when I graduated from northern 
I had this sort of idea of like, I'm going to be a dancer slash choreographer slash lighting designer slash technician slash teacher slash academic slash. <laughs> I really thought I was going to be like good at everything. And then after half a year, it became really clear to me I do the lighting design and the choreography because those are the things that actually I, I care about. Those are the things that naturally I, I, yeah, that I write the applications for that I, I think about those. Uh, and I think I've always made my best decisions when I've been able to to define for myself what it is that's actually going to make me happy because it's yes. because you, you don't take on this career to make other money you do it because it makes you happy so I think that so I think that having um having a very good idea of what that is and pursuing that uh and then once you I mean if you if, if for anyone that's graduating wanting to become a choreographer um I can say that that's what keeps you through the difficult times like like you it, you know when there appears when you're not working so much maybe you have to take a I, I worked in Tesco for a few months and you but I I never felt like I wasn't a choreographer because my brain was always my brain was yeah. always thinking about it and it was that was always who I was and I could keep on to that um and then also when it when it comes to making your own work it's also really helpful because it's there's again in the professional world there's a lot of influences and you can make decisions about what might what you think might make you look clever what might make you look cool what you think other people want from you and actually um sticking the, the quite simplistic idea of sticking with what you love and making with what you really really want to make um is actually can, can actually be quite difficult but if you keep on doing this then again you will find a network of people that um respond to you and then you will you'll have those conversations and that'll keep that'll keep you going um spiritually and artistically and then hopefully eventually financially um yeah it's it's a difficult one because i i um if i get because i think the other thing about if you're looking uh, to become a freelance artist in any way, everyone has a completely different career. Yeah. And I live with I live with another choreographer whose whose career is she's fantastic, and her career is completely different from mine. She her whole she's teaching a lot. She's doing a whole load of fitness stuff, um, and we both have I guess crafted out careers for ourselves where we can support ourselves financially yeah. um, by by following our own interests. But it's different. It's different for everybody. So therefore, yeah. the only thing you can really say is find what interests you and yeah. just and work and work at it yeah that's really helpful because i think quite a lot of the time people sort of get tunnel visioned into I need, to go out, I need to make something i need to get funding and oftentimes sort of the the crafting of the material comes to please the funding. yeah absolutely and you, it's so easy especially when you're because i think the other thing is that as well as creatively um, following your interest, mm -hmm. you also find your own path. I think there's this idea that if you're a choreographer, you the first thing you do is you get out of school and you immediately apply for funding. Yeah. And then, but that's actually a very specific way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And you can you can still find other ways to be creative and still find other you know other things to do. I went back a lot of the first stuff I made was I, I went back to my to Kent where I'm from and and, and made some youth work. Um, I just I was getting into the studios and just sort of trying stuff out because there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of pressure if you're applying for funding first. However, some people do that and that really works for them and it, and it, and it, and it grows and it grows up in that way. Um, I think that when I when I was in my third year at Northern, or, or actually probably earlier, there was this sort of some kind of idea in my head that once you finish. If you're if you're not a mature student, which I, I wasn't, I went when I was 18. There's this idea that maybe once you graduate, you're going to just sort of fall off a cliff, yeah. and then you're you know, and you're going to be. You're, it's just going to be every day is going to be panic, and begging for jobs which no one ever gives you. Which it wasn't for me at all. But I think it's really useful for people, maybe for students, to hear that when you graduate, you'll still have the same interests and passions and worries and you know journeys that you had before. A positive way of thinking about it is you just have more freedom now to yeah. explore which of to explore which of those which of those you want to go down and which of those you want to work on yeah no because i think it is important for everyone to remember that it is like your own life in a sense like you don't have to model your career after mm. one thing that works 
No, absolutely not. And I think that, yeah, I mean, I always say I really, I really panic. I really panicked when I was a student. I really panicked about my my ballet technique because my ballet technique is 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 not good. And I was really panicked, like, oh my god, how am I supposed to have a dance career when I can't do a double pirouette? And then one's like, to do a double pirouette because that's not what I would do. I was like, what am I going to do if I can't get into you know a neoclassical company? Oh well, I can still have quite a good career doing stuff that actually makes me happy. But then again, if you decide if someone decides that a double pirouette is that's their what they want for their career, then they will find ways and take yeah. classes and, and pursue pursue that in their own way. So it's um yeah, it's very I found it really freeing. I loved my time at both both dance schools, absolutely. Um but it is really freeing to leave and you realize how much how much you're influenced by the by the ethos of the school, by the ethos of the teachers, and how much that that's a positive thing, mm -hmm. but 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 it's also a positive thing to be without that. Yeah. As well. Because yeah, I think the biggest worry for people is just the financial element of it. But there's 101 ways to generate money, so I think it's just finding what works alongside what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, again, I sort of, I, I was my, I guess my model uh, when I, when I, quite soon after graduating, was that I was doing um, some life design work, but also a lot of touring, a lot of touring work, um, production managing, technical stage managing for small scale dance tours. What I would gen, what I would generally be doing is um, taking the fees that I got from that. Uh, and saving those and then putting that into mm -hmm. paying paying dancers for a, a couple of days in the studio or whatever. Um, uh, and that's not, and I also was quite lucky because for a long while, I wouldn't do it now, but for a long while I wasn't, I didn't, I was working a lot abroad and um, well, and, and just away from home. So I, I could technically uh, live with my parents, but I was mm -hmm. I was always on the on the road, so I saved a lot of money on rent, which then yeah. again went back into buying. Um, and so that, and that worked perfectly for me. I was really happy. Yeah. Um, again, that's not going to work for everybody, but you might have someone might go home and have a local teaching gig, which might you know uh, yeah. provide that provide that same thing. So, and it's a really useless thing again to say, but you you financially you sort of get into a rhythm of working stuff out and yeah. and you as again, again as long as you keep that passion and that interest still going and you know that you know where your head is at with that then that 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 just becomes easier as time goes on really yeah nice well thank you for coming on today show some really helpful and insightful things <laughs> um <laughs> if people want to sort of follow what you're doing um keep up with you where can they go to do that uh, so I have a website, uh, barnabybooth.com. Um, we just have a new video section on the website. So, check that out. Um, or, uh, probably the easiest way is Instagram. Um, uh, Barnaby Booth Dance. Um, it should be quite easy to find. And yeah, I pretty much update, uh, everything on there. Um, it's been quite quiet for the past year, but, uh, things are starting to, starting to open up again. So my Instagram will start getting interesting again, hopefully. Uh, and uh, yeah, nice. well, thank you very much for coming on today. I'll see you very well. Thank you for having me. The next summit, <laughs> cool. See you, man.